Good morning and welcome to another Micro Moment Monday here at Rose Red Homestead. And today we are going to do some dirty work. We have had several requests for show us how to clean cast iron pans. And I can understand why you might have questions, especially for many people who are just getting into using cast iron pans. There is so much out there on the internet and it is contradictory. One contradicts the other. Should you or shouldn't you do this, that or the other? There are folks who say this is the only way to care for a cast iron pan. I'm very pragmatic, practical minded, and my opinion on a whole lot of things is Occam's razor. Occam's razor is simplest solution is usually the best solution and I use whatever works. But that is based on some scientific knowledge that I'm going to share with you in just a moment. First of all, cast iron is a really, really tough material. There's very little that you can do to damage cast iron beyond being able to fix it, which is a good thing. We have done an earlier video on how to strip cast iron that might be old or rusted and then how to season it, which might be a good one for you to look at too if you are in that situation. And I will link that video to the end of this one. Today, we're just going to talk about how to clean. But before we do that, here's what you need to understand about cast iron. Cast iron is a little bit porous, meaning that it has pores. If you took cast iron and looked at it under a very powerful microscope, the surface of cast iron would look a lot like gravel, bumps and hillies, hillies, <laughs> hills, hills and valleys, hills and valleys, and it's very lumpy. Well, what we need to do in order to get our cast iron pan ready to use is we need to flatten out that surface. And the way that we do that is by seasoning it. Now, the way the chemical composition works for cast iron and oil is that when you put a fat or an oil on the bottom of a cast iron skillet or pot or Dutch oven or whatever, <clears throat> and then put it in the oven on high heat, that oil seeps down into all of those little hillies and valleys uh, on the surface of the pan and forms a nice, smooth, hard surface that actually chemically bonds. And, and that is a really tough, tough seasoning. It's a tough surface. But can it be scraped off or removed? Yes, it can. And most of the cautions that people give you on cast iron, they may not understand what I just explained to you, but it, the, what they do understand is that that seasoning can be scraped off or destroyed in some ways. And so they are telling you what their opinion is so that you don't disrupt that seasoning. A well-seasoned pan is pretty resistant to um, things sticking on it. For instance, I have right here two skillets. Now this one I cooked eggs in and it's been sitting out for a while because I wanted to save it to show for today. But look how the egg stuff just slides right off. And that is because of the seasoning. This one on the other hand, I tried really hard to make a bad mess. <laughs> So I put some beans in this one last night, turned the oven up to 400 and let it sit in there for a couple of hours. Oh, our home smelled so delightful. <laughs> Jim said, what are you making? What are you making? <laughs> but I wanted to make a real mess. And see, this one isn't coming loose like the other one is. So we're going to have a time doing this one. We're going to do this one first. So the first attack is that you just simply take a paper towel and wipe through it. And I'm just going to wipe this right into the garbage. And you can see the seasoning underneath is still in place. It has that little sheen to it, but it still isn't clean. Now, a lot of people say, don't put water in it, don't use water. Well, I use water. I not only use water, but I use soap. And people who are very anti-using dish soap in cast iron, 
that harkens back to generations ago when, and it was, it was valid back then because the soap they made was made of lye and vinegar. And those two compounds don't put those in there or you're going to be reseasoning your pan. But the thing of it is you can reseason it. It's not a big deal if the seasoning gets disturbed. So I'm going to move over here to the sink, turn on my water, add a little bit of just dish soap. And with my dishcloth, I'm just going to wash through it. And it is clean. Now I'm going to bring it back over here because the one thing that you want to do is to protect your pan against rust because it will rust anywhere that it breaks through the seasoning. Now I have a couple of choices. You can use oil, you can use bacon grease, I just use shortening, you can use whatever you want. People have a lot of opinions about the very best uh, fat to use to season. Now I'm just going to, now I use my pots pretty often. So reapplying this layer means that next time I pull it out of the cupboard. Now it's a very thin layer and it looks all nice and shiny there. Um, I can put it in the cupboard just exactly like this. If I want to add this to the seasoning layer, then I will put this in the oven at 350 for about an hour and let this layer polymerize with the other layers that are there to help cover that rough, rough surface. And that will harden that into a seasoned layer. Or I can just leave it like this. And next time I use this pan, um, when I heat it up prior to putting the food in it, it will polymerize a little bit. So you can just kind of take your choice. Now I'm fine with just putting this one back in the cupboard. I'm not so sure that this one is going to be able to do that. So let's set this one aside and begin our real work. So the first thing I want to do is to get as much off as I possibly can. And so I'm just taking a spoon and removing all these burned beans. Well, I can tell right now, this is not one that I'm going to be able to just wipe out with a paper towel. It eats the paper towel. So this is going to require some soaking, most likely. Now, when I say the word soaking, several of you are just going to cringe. Soaking? Oh my gosh, don't soak your pan. It will rust. Well, it's not going to rust if the, if the seasoning layer is still in place. And so far this one is, but I have two tools that are going to help me. I have this chain mail spongy thingy, and I have this plastic scraper that are going to help me. Now this one, ne neither of these are going to do anything until I get this softened. So I'm going to, to put this in the sink and let it soak for a little bit. All right, so I have the water in here soaking. Now you can see the way the water beads up all around here, that the seasoning layer is still in place. So it, it won't hurt this to soak for a little while and we'll see if we can soften some of that really burned on stuff. I'm gonna put this in the sink and we'll be back in just a little bit. Well, our pan has been soaking for almost an hour. Let's see how it looks. So 
So here's what it looks like. So I'm going to scrub with this. Let's rinse. Okay. And you can see how the water is still, still beating. So let's just take a paper towel and see what we've got. That did most of it. And notice that there's no rust anywhere because it's well seasoned. Now I still see some gunk right there, so I'm going to go after it with this. That's not really getting it. So I'm going to go after it with hot water and soap and my scratcher. This is not steel wool that I have right here, but it is a pot scratcher. All right, I'm just gonna scrub gently. All right, let's take a good hard look. I think I've got most of it. Now, one of the things that I see right here is that some of the seasoning was ruined by the beans themselves. These, this is in the shape of where the beans were. And so what I am going to do with this one, because this was quite a bad burn. I'm going to give it a coat of oil and do you see how that fat, this shortening that I'm using, um, now makes it so that there is no unevenness in the coloring on the side of the pan. But just applying it topically isn't gonna do it. What I'm going to want to do is now to put this in a 350 oven and burn it in so that it all becomes even. That's what I'm going to do next. I will take it to the oven and I want to get all this water off. Of course, being, and the back side is just fine. It's just the inside of the pan. I will put it in the oven, a 350 oven, like this for about an hour and then um, upside down so that any excess will drip off. You don't want any excess oil at all. Um, halfway through, I will go in and wipe it out again because I want the thinnest of coats and then I will bring it back when that is finished. It has been an hour and um, I forgot to halfway go in and wipe it out. So you can see that there is uh, places where the oil has uh, polymerized with the metal and there are places where it's sitting on the top. What I'm going to do now is, um, and it, it, I, it's done enough. And, but it's hot. And by the way, I always wear heat gloves when I work with hot cast iron. These little hot pads just don't give me enough coverage. And I've burned my hands before. So now I'm just going to be careful, um, a lot more careful. So I am going to take another layer of this fat because this is very hot. That gives me the opportunity of putting another layer on. I'm not going to put it back in the oven but still, the heat that is going on right now is enough to do exactly what I want to have done. And so I'm wiping up all the excess that I can possibly get up 
And look how nice that looks. This now is touched up with the seasoning. It is ready to just cool down and go back in the cupboard as soon as it's cool. Even with that awful, awful burned mess on it, with an hour's worth of soaking, because it had a good seasoned coat on it, it was protected from rusting. I don't worry about that if I have good seasoning in place. And then um, we put another layer of seasoning on because the beans themselves did etch a little bit of the seasoning up. But now it's nice and smooth in there and I can continue cooking knowing that it is going to be a nonstick surface. One of the things to remember when we cook with cast iron is that I never put food in a dry pan. I always, always coat it with oil first and that protects it. It also ensures that um, it's going to be laying down another layer because it is the buildup of layer after layer of oil or fat that polymer polymerizes with the metal that keeps that nice, beautiful seasoned coating in place. So I hope that this was helpful for you and don't worry so much about details. Do what your instincts tell you to do. Worst case scenario, if you um, etch out some of the season on it, just redo it. And you can follow the instructions that are in the video that I'm going to put um, at the end of this video on how to completely refinish cast iron if it ever becomes necessary. So thanks for being with us and we will see you next Monday for another Micro Moment.